I'm in the spare room of our house, and it's a multi-purpose room that I use to store my model trains and also to pack before a cruise. And then today it's making a pretty good TV studio for this little video about some of the weird things that I take with me on a cruise. I think you might find this interesting and maybe it'll give you some ideas of things that you should take on a cruise. First thing I'll mention is a beach bag. My wife made this one in her sewing and embroidery room, and it's very handy to have when you go on shore excursions during a cruise. You pack your towels and sunblock and band-aids and all that kind of stuff that you want to take with you when you go ashore. It's good to have one bag that you can throw over your shoulder and take with you. Another thing is a six outlet power strip. A lot of times on cruise ships, there aren't a whole lot of electrical outlets in the cabins. So it's very handy to have a six outlet strip for charging all your stuff at night, like your cell phone, your laptop, whatever kind of electronics you bring with you. Uh, you may find that you need more than just one or two outlets in your room. So this is very handy. Just be sure that you don't bring one that has a surge suppressor in it because there's some Coast Guard regulations that uh, basically ban using a surge suppressor on a cruise ship. So get one that's just a straight six outlet strip, no surge suppressor. Speaking of electrical things, this is a converter to convert from the European style 220 volt outlets that a lot of cruise ships have over to the American. Usually there's both types in the cabin. If you have one of these type of converters, then you can convert all the European ones to Americans. And then with the addition of the American ones that are already there, you've got a whole bunch of outlets there. And maybe if you use this, you don't need the six outlet strip. Just depends on how many things you want to plug in all at the same time. A handy little device is a pocket sized flashlight, the teeniest flashlight you can find. The reason that this is handy is if, if you wake up at two in the morning and you need to pee, this is really handy for finding your way to the bathroom in the dark of a strange cabin that you're not used to without having to turn on the lights and waking up your spouse. You should also buy one of these little portable electronic luggage scales. You hang your luggage from this strap, basically, and this scale will tell you very accurately how heavy your luggage is. Now, there's really no weight limits for luggage to be brought on a cruise ship, but if you're flying to the cruise, then this is very handy for meeting what's usually a 50-pound requirement for luggage. If your luggage is more than 50 pounds, you'll pay more. So this helps you get right under the line. I also like to bring some noise canceling headphones with me and it's useful at a couple of different times. First off, if you're flying to the cruise and there's a screaming kid in the cabin of the airplane, uh, this is a lifesaver right here. But also on the cruise itself, if you don't like the music that they're playing out by the pool or if people are talking loudly around you or whatever when you're trying to relax in the sun, some noise canceling headphones are very, very handy. This is one of my favorites. This is an indoor outdoor thermometer, digital thermometer with a wireless remote. So you take a 3M command strip, which is basically like double sided tape that releases very easily. And you put the command strip on the back of the remote and you attach that somewhere out on your balcony. And then this part goes inside again with a command strip on the back to attach it to the wall of your cabin. And because it's easily removable, those command strips come off real easy. At the end of the cruise, you can just take this with you. That makes it really easy to tell what the weather is like outside, uh, really exactly how hot or cold it is outside and also inside. So if you're trying to make sure that you have the cabin set the way that you like it, as far as the air conditioning, it's really easy to do when you've got numbers staring you right in the face, telling you what the temperatures are. Another thing I bring along with me is a little plastic trash bag. It's a kitchen trash bag. That is the dirty clothes bag during the cruise. So all my dirty clothes go into that. And then on the way home, uh, I'm not mixing up all my stuff together. The dirty clothes are all separated in my suitcase on the way home. One you might not expect is duct tape. You'd be surprised how often that comes in handy on a cruise for fixing things. 
And I like to bring a big plastic cup with me, very lightweight, so it's not adding a whole lot of weight to your luggage. But I've noticed that on cruise ships in the buffet and places like that, uh, the cups are very, very small, so you can't get a big drink of something. So I take a big cup with me, and I take that with me to lunch, and I can get a big glass of lemonade or big glass of ice water or whatever it is I want. Speaking of cups, paper Dixie cups, bathroom sized. I just have this thing about using the glass cups in the bathrooms of cruise ships. I don't like glass cups. I like to use a cup one time, throw it away. I don't want to worry about leaving germs on it. And I know that the cabin stewards change out the glass cups from time to time, but I'm just more comfortable taking a, a bunch of Dixie cups with me and using it once and putting it in the trash. Now, there's also a whole slew of things that you might want to get before your cruise uh, that is in the category of medicines and lotions and things like that, because these are things that if you try to buy them on the cruise, you're going to pay an arm and a leg for. So just for example, aloe. If you think there's any chance that you might get a sunburn and you might want some aloe during your cruise, uh, it's way cheaper to buy it at home in uh, Walmart or wherever than it is to buy it on the cruise ship. Then you want to be sure to bring any over-the-counter medicines that you might need, like decongestants or things like that. It's always cheaper to buy those at home. And I'm talking about uh, things you might need in situations where maybe you come down with a cold or something like that. A lot of times I'll bring a thing of cough syrup with me just in case I get sick on the cruise because it's so expensive to buy things like that on the cruise ship itself. Also, band-aids. Boy, you know, we've had so many times where I've stubbed my toe or something on a shore excursion. So we just bring a big plastic bag full of every possible size of bandage now. Again, it's very lightweight, so it's not adding a lot of weight to your luggage. And we keep it in the plastic bag for to make it easier for the TSA when they're looking inside your luggage. Uh, they can just see immediately what it is. It's not anything they need to worry about. And also because it's easy to throw this into the shore excursion bag and take it with us on a shore excursion. And then when we're back, we leave it out in one of the drawers in the cabin so that uh, we always have these available if something happens. Speaking of shore excursions, this is a little portable travel-sized umbrella. That has saved my life many times on a shore excursion where the weather started out really good at the beginning of the day and then turned just awful towards the end of the day. So uh, it happens a lot in the Caribbean where there'll be afternoon thunder showers. Bring a portable umbrella with you. Huh. And one more thing is a wristwatch. I would suggest using a wristwatch to tell the time rather than relying on your cell phone for the time like a lot of people do these days. And the reason is that cell phones can pick up the local time off of the local cell towers and that may be different than ship time. So if you have a a wristwatch and you set it at the beginning of the cruise to ship's time, you're always going to have the correct time and you're never going to run into that trap where you're sitting in uh, Senior Frogs and Cozumel and you think it's three o'clock, but it's really four o'clock and the ship is just about to leave. Now, I'm not going to tell you all the little stuff like, you know, bring underwear, bring socks, stuff like that. You can figure that out. But what I do suggest is that you make yourself a list way in advance. Just start thinking, you know, a few weeks before your cruise about all the things you're going to need and write them down. And then you can check them off as you pack them in your bag and make sure that you have them. And then also you can just improve on this packing list as you do more cruises over the years. So when you get home from your cruise and you realize, oh, I wish I had brought along, you know, X, Y, Z, write it on your list for next time. And with every cruise, your list gets a little better and a little better. Now, there's four things I want you to write down right now that you absolutely must not forget to take with you on your cruise. One is your wallet. Okay, you're going to be in a heap of trouble if you don't bring your wallet with you. So write yourself a little note. Do I have my wallet? And make sure that you put that somewhere where you're going to check it before you leave for your cruise. The other thing to be on that note is your cruise documents, like your boarding pass. Make sure you've got that. Without that, there's going to be a big mess at the pier. 
Uh, the other thing is your passport and the passport for everybody traveling with you. If you forget those, there's going to be a whole lot of trouble at the pier when you're trying to get on the ship. And then the final thing is the charger for your cell phone and actually charger for any kind of electronic device that you bring. But most importantly, your cell phone. If you don't have your cell phone charger with you for a week cruise, uh, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> Well, I hope that's helpful. I'm Jim Zim. Thank you for watching my video. I'm going to pop up on the screen some other videos of mine that I think you might enjoy that are about cruising. And be sure to visit my website at jimzim.net to see about all the cruises that I've been on and to hear about some of the cruises that I'll be going on in the future.